Okay, so you've got another another hypothesis as to how heart disease happens. Can you explain why certain populations have got hugely high rates of heart disease and other populations don't? Because that's the final test, isn't it? Can you explain it? Um, but I'd say this stress and the heart disease hypothesis isn't mine. As far as I'm concerned, Kurt Bjorn talk should have won a Nobel Prize for working out what causes heart disease. You can't get a Nobel Prize when you're dead, so maybe maybe I'll get it instead. No, just joking. Um, the populations in the world with the highest rates of heart disease currently are any ideas? Korea used to be. Sorry? Korea used to be. Finland used to be, 1960s. Not really very high any longer. Australian Aboriginals? Yes. Maori? Pacific Maoris? Pacific yeah. Islanders. Pacific Islanders. Immigrant Asian Indians? Two. Any country. You move out of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Um, the rates of heart disease are catastrophically high in the, in the countries they move to. I think everyone will tell you that the highest rate of heart disease is in Asian Indians in Britain and America and South Africa and wherever they go to. I showed you a, a diagram earlier of Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe has a catastrophically high rate of heart disease. Lithuania, five years ago, was 1,500 per 100,000, which is, France is 83, that's um, 25 times as high age matched. Now, Finland's an interesting case because I thought, well, right, if you're going to explain heart disease and you're going to say that it's caused by, if you like, stress, what happened in Finland that caused them to have the highest rate of heart disease in the 1960s? Um, so I went and did a bit of historical digging, and I found out that in 1948, Russia decided to kick 700,000 Finns out of a region called Karelia in Russia and they forcibly evicted them into Finland. The largest forced eviction of peoples in European history occurred in the late 40s, early 50s and was followed by the highest rates of heart disease in the world at that time. If, I, I'm, I'm from Scotland, people say, what about, what about the west coast of Scotland in the 1970s? that had the highest rate of heart disease about 1970-71 was top of the pops. We were quite proud. That's where I went through medical school. It was all the deep-fried Mars bar jokes and all that sort of stuff. Well, their lifestyle is not fantastic in the West Coast of Scotland. The centre of Glasgow was stripped out in the 1950s, 1960s. 700,000 people were moved to new towns and their societies were disintegrated. And if you read about people's memories of those times, they were incredibly stressed and unhappy at what happened to them. Australian Aboriginals currently have the highest rate of heart disease in the world. I think that may not be the case if things move around. If you read about the life of Australian Aboriginals, their lifestyle has been utterly and completely destroyed. There's, if you like, rather than emigration, I like to say that Australian Aboriginals haven't left Australia. Australia has left the Australian Aboriginals. And, and they're at the bottom of the heap. The, the average life expectancy of an Australian Aboriginal is 20 years less than that of the European surrounding which is just about the same as the centre of Glasgow, actually. So, um, and if you look at um, 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 Native Americans as well, they have a catastrophically high rate of heart disease. And once again, they were all stuck on, on um, taken away from their previous lifestyle. In Eastern Europe, the rate of heart disease went up catastrophically as the wall, wall fell. And in fact, in Russia, life expectancy went down seven years in a two-year period in the late 1980s. 70% of those deaths were due to heart disease. And all of Eastern Europe, in fact, Poland was the first of Eastern European countries to have a catastrophic and high rate of heart disease, and it's been falling ever since. And I, and I look at Americans saying that had the highest rate of heart disease in the world in the, in the 30s or 40s. But what happened to America was in the early part of the century they had millions and millions of people that emigrated to that country. Now, I'm not saying it, it, this is an absolute fact, but I think when you're looking at heart disease, I think the most interesting thing is it's gone like that in countries, and they've been going like that. And, and if you look at the risk factors, they don't match up in any way, shape, or form. Something else has caused it. And so if you look at other, other populations, and what I've looked at is, is, is populations like the Amish in America, the Seventh-day Adventists, and the, the um, Mormons, and they have very low rates of heart disease, incredibly low rates of heart disease, but they're about a third of the surrounding population in these, what I would call settled, settled, um, uh, communities. Um, and there's a very interesting 
community was in Pennsylvania called Rosetta, which many of you never heard of. There was a, a place in, in Italy called Rosetta Val Pattori, and virtually the entire population moved to a new town in, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And up till 1968, there wasn't a single recorded case of heart attack in that community. Um, and whilst they, they all smoked and ate, etc., and everything, what, 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 what observers found was that they had, they had maintained, if you like, social structures that they'd had in Italy. And as that broke down, the rate of heart disease went up. So I do believe that you can, you can explain heart disease, not all of heart disease. I mean, I, I'm not a complete skeptic. I do believe smoking causes heart disease. I do think exercise is good for you. Um, you know, these, these are real factors, but there are other factors going on. And I think if we, if, if all we do is look at cholesterol and all we do is say that's the answer, to me, what, what people have done is they've given you a huge piece of a jigsaw puzzle called cholesterol and they've stuck it in the middle of the table and said that has to be fitted into the jigsaw puzzle. If you don't fit it in, you're not right. And you cannot fit heart disease around that piece because that piece shouldn't be there. It should be taken out. And, and, and historically, you can understand why people have come to that point. But I think, I think we really, really have to say that cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. Um, I got so excited, although I'm, I'm probably not, not, the, um, not the hardest working person in the world. I, I, was, I, was, I, I wrote this, I spent years doing the research because I'm so convinced about it. And I hope maybe some of you are, at least had some of your ideas slightly, slightly uh, nudged here. Um, another book that's coming out that I want, I want it, it won't be called this in Britain, um, it's, it's, it's a book that's just been published in the States called Good Calories, Bad Calories, uh, uh, where he demolishes the whole diet our, our hypothesis. He also comes out with an awful lot of other stuff saying that the, the recent uh, epidemic of obesity is because we're eating carbohydrates and not fat, which I happen to believe is true. Um, that's in the, in the UK and it will be published in January, and I think, um, if you don't mind my book, buy his book. Um, and so... Um, essentially, that's what I've come to say. I hope that you found it at least slightly interesting. I hope I've maybe one or two people who were thinking otherwise have, have perhaps thought, well, maybe it's not as straightforward as I thought it was. Uh, and I do hope maybe I'll maybe change the mind or two here, um, because that was my intention. Thank you very much.